By the way, I love all that descriptive stuff. I'm going to listen to this again, copy all that down, and probably steal it. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Welcome to the Active Marketer Podcast, where we talk about how to design, automate, and scale your business to the next level using sales and marketing automation. You can find out all the tips, tactics, and techniques you need to get more customers and sell more stuff over at theactivemarketer.com. Now, here's your host, Barry Moore. Welcome to the Active Marketer Podcast. I am your host, Barry Moore, and this is the podcast that's all about sales funnels and marketing automation. This week, we're going to talk all about one of the really most underutilized features uh, of Active Campaign and probably most marketing automation platforms, and that's lead scoring. I've touched on lead scoring briefly in a previous episode, but I want to go more in depth to some more advanced tactics uh, and advanced ways that you can use marketing automation and lead scoring within your sales funnels to really identify who those brand champions are. Who are the people that are most receptive? Who are your key buyers? Who are the people with the biggest customer lifetime value in your business so that you can really turn them from customers into brand champions that will bring other people into your business? So I thought we'd bring on somebody else. You know, a lot of times as entrepreneurs, we kind of work in a little bit of a vacuum and and it's always good to to bounce ideas off somebody else. So uh, this week's guest I'm going to bring on, who is another marketing automation freak like myself, Stepan Hovanian, and we're going to talk a little bit about how he uses lead scoring, and we're going to bounce some ideas around and come up with some new ways that you can use lead scoring in your business and in your automations. But before we do that, Of course, of course, of course, it's the Shameless Social Proof segment. Uh, This is where I read out your five-star reviews from iTunes uh, and Stitcher and SoundCloud. Now, you can also get the podcast over on SoundCloud. So this week's review comes from Australia. It's five stars. I never miss an episode, says Clint PP from Australia. It says, Barry Moore is the automation expert. When it comes to wanting to learn more about using email automation, there's no need to go anywhere else. His shows are packed with useful information and tips to help you grow your list and increase your profits with automation. I love the fact that it's a no-fluff show focused on delivering value to the listeners. Keep up the great work, Barry. Thank you very much. What a flattering review, Clint. I really take, I appreciate you taking the time to head over to iTunes uh, and leave that review for us. And please, if you're finding value out of these podcasts that we put out every week, I'd love it if you could head over to iTunes or Stitcher, your favorite platform there, and leave us a five-star review. What that does is it drives the podcast up the ranks and makes it easier for other people to find. So you're really helping those other people out as well by getting this information in the hands of all the people who want to know how to use it. So do me a favor. Uh, you know We put out great value. I'd love it if you can come and leave us a review uh, over in iTunes or Stitcher. And I will read out your review on a future Shameless Social Proof segment. So let's get into this week's episode, which is all about advanced lead scoring techniques. All right, I'd like to welcome to the show Stepan Hovnanian from Shovey Websites in the Boston area. Stepan, welcome. Thanks for having me. Great to see you. Yeah, sounds good, <laughs> brother. Uh, Stefan is a uh, not only is an email marketing guy and a website strategy guy, but he's also a marketing automation freak like myself. So much so that we just spent the last four hours on a uh, group certification call with Active Campaign, which sparked a few ideas for us to talk about. So I thought we'd get on the show and talk a little bit about lead scoring. How's that sound? Sounds great to me. All right, brother. Um, For those of you who aren't familiar with lead scoring, you want to fill people in on what you can do with lead scoring or how it works? Yeah, sure. So the the nuts and bolts of it is is you give points to your contacts for doing certain things. Um, And the points are completely arbitrary. They are, it's it's a gamification system that uh, it's an internal thing. It's not, you, you don't tell your contacts how many points they've earned or anything like that. But it's essentially just, it's, it's another way of measuring 
um, engagement within your emails or your series. It's another way just of measuring the um, the action that you get on your different the different campaigns and se- uh, sequences that you're sending out. And so it'll help you make. I think it kind of helps streamline things a little bit because like we t- we use tagging a lot, you know, but that doesn't necessarily everybody could have you could have ten people have the same tag, but you don't know if you know person three versus person ten is way more engaged in the content might be a little bit more um, ripe for a certain kind of offer, right? So scoring kind of helps that because it adds this extra layer of points and, and, and measurement. Um, and now, with, I mean, within active campaigns, we get like a little bit mechanical here. Uh, if you click on contact and then you click on manage scoring, you end up at a page that says lead score rules. And who knows, they may change the text on that someday later, but you end up at the scoring dashboard, if you will, which allows you to create different categories of lead scores, and um, from there, you can first off, you can have a contact score or a lead score or a deal score. Um, and the, the contact score is essentially just points that you're assigning to the contact as a whole. It has nothing to do with the pipeline or anything like that with an active campaign. The, uh, the deal score is a pipeline-driven one. So you'll have to actually assign a pipeline to, the, um, to that score. Um, and then once, you, you know, once you've created that, you can create different rules within there. Um, you also don't have to. You can do that through automations as well, which is kind of cool. I've, I've started to actually play with that more um, where my my scores are based. Uh, my scoring happens more in automations, but I've created this category uh, under the, you know, under the lead scoring because you have to assign it. You know, when you go in the automation and say add 10 points to a score, it's going to say, well, what score would you like to add it to? And you have to pick. So you pick. I, I set that up first now. And I'm starting to not put the rules inside that uh, inside that section. I'm starting to let the points accumulate and get managed and and whatnot by um, on the automation side of things. But that's kind of an intro to it. Yeah, and some really interesting things around the way um, the way Active Campaign implements lead scoring is it, it's available on some of the other platforms, but in the other platforms, you're kind of limited to th- how they think you should use it, right? So. Um, I think it's Infusionsoft. We get like five little flames to tell you if someone's a hot contact or not. And same with, I think, Agile CRM does a similar sort of thing. But um, in Active Campaign, you can actually set up what you want to reward or what you want to track. So you're not limited to to the manufacturer's way that they think you should use it. You can set it up to track or score pretty much anything you want. Um, and I want to loop back to something you said about tags. You know, I've, uh, we, uh, we use tags quite heavily inside Active Campaign, and so there tends to be a lot of tags. And you brought up an interesting point that uh, you know, some you could have ten people that have the same tag. So I think if you want to, if you want to differentiate, you know, what's the difference between tags and lead scoring? Is tags would tell you what somebody's done or what what they've seen. You know, it tells you their behavior a little bit. So. A, a tag might a tag will tell you what they've interacted, what they've uh, what they've done, but the lead scoring will tell you how interested they are in what they've done. If that makes sense, right? So, if you send an email out to somebody, those ten people, and those ten people open it, all those ten people might get one point. Uh, but if a couple of those people click through on a link in that email, they might get some more points. And then if they land on a content page on your website. Um, that has some links off to a product page and they end up on that product page and we're getting them some more points for ending up on the product page. So they followed the whole kind of content content trail we've laid out for them. So they'll have more points than somebody who's just opened their email and read the email. So while everybody might have the same tag, some people are going to end up with a higher score, if that makes sense. That was beautifully put. Um, and I think you mentioned another good thing too as well is under the, the lead scoring dashboard, again, which you can find under contacts, manage scoring, you can not only can you just have lead scoring across the platform, but you can have multiple categories of lead scoring. So you can say, this is people who are engaged with my content. This is people who are interested in my products. This is people who are interested in my services. So you can have different lead scoring categories depending on what it is that you're trying to track and or reward. So, um, that makes it super powerful as well. So um, uh, tell us a little bit about how you're using it and how you're using it for some of your clients. Right. So I'm, um, by the way, I love all that descriptive stuff. I'm going to listen to this again, copy all that down and probably steal it. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> you did that beautifully, Barry. There's nothing new um, on the internet, right? Oh, it's, it, it's great. And, and it's funny because you said you're right. You could have a couple of different categories. And um, just recently I was starting to play with the idea of, you know, what if I created different Different categories that uh, of contact scores for people, um, 
and when they maybe, you know, start to elevate them or I don't know, just move them around a little bit more. Uh, my business isn't so evolved that I need all of these things yet, but, uh, you know, when we all work with clients that, that might be something worth playing around with anyway. So I'm using it essentially to develop, to develop my audience within my email list, my own personal email list. Um, and so what, what I'm doing is I'm giving essentially engagement points and I'm using it to help identify brand champions. And one of the things I'm actually doing is setting expirations on them. So, um, let's say if, you know, over the course of three months, somebody's really hot, hot on all your stuff, they're engaging, whatever. And then they kind of fall off the radar for, let's say six months or another three months. So I want those points to actually expire. And you can set that up when you, when you, um, award points, you can set an expiration on that, by the way. So that's one of the things that I'm trying to do is to give people points for opens, clicks and replies. And obviously an open is a, that's a very weak signal. So you get the fewest amount of points for that. A click is something stronger. So, you know, let's just, I don't know, you get more points, maybe three or four times more. Um, and then a reply to me, a reply is, is a very significant, um, you know, uh, action. So they get the most points for that. And, uh, the other thing too, is it, that a reply is one of those things that, you know, at that point they've replied to you. Um, it, the chances are good that you'll be able to develop a, a more of a recurring relationship with them. Um, and so that's one of those opportunities really to create brand champions. So I have a couple of segments of people that, um, brand champions and then, you know, maybe like a VIP type thing, like a little, little bit, uh, lower tier. Um, and then just general engagers and people who are ghosts <laughs> uh, or lurkers. And uh, I'll use the points to help me identify who those might be. Just all I have to, all I have to do really is look over, let's say over the course of three months, how many emails did I send? Cause again, the, I'm not doing a lot of automated sequencing. Um, it's more just newsletter style, uh, you know, marketing. Um, I'm promoting blog posts and webinars and things like that. Just, you know, event that, that kind of stuff. So, uh, what I'm noticing is that as people get more engaged with it, you know, that, that score will go up. And then I have the opportunity to, I can do a couple of different things. And one of the things that I've done is I've created an automation that will say if, you know, if, uh, every, actually I put, I'm putting this one in the marketplace that's coming out. Um, it's one of those like, at a certain threshold, you enter into this automation and then it loops. So you stay in it and every couple of months, it'll actually, um, it'll actually make sure that you're still engaged and it'll nudge you. We can, I'm going to have it, you know, set it up so that you could send like a little, Hey, are we still friends or do you still like me or whatever? Um, or am I still providing value? Just some kind of an email, just like a little nudge to remind people, by the way, I'm still here. You know, are you still getting my emails? And if not, give them an opportunity to do something about it. Um, you know, the, the other side to that would be if uh, creating a similar automation that, that identifies the people with really high scores and creates some kind of, um, you know, a reward for them. Maybe it's a VIP, uh, access, um, some special content or just, uh, maybe it's just a notification for me to say, Hey, you need to put, you know, this person Barry on your, on your radar. You got to actually like go stalk them. Here's some, you know, go check them out online, make sure that there's, you know, See if there's any opportunity for you guys to um, uh, to do something together, or maybe you know promote some of his blog content because he seems to really, really be into the stuff that you're doing. And uh, you know maybe there's an opportunity there to to again to use to, to leverage that to leverage the the advocacy that you have. So um, I'm using it for that. And it, again, by doing it where those points expire, you have this opportunity to keep people in a loop that you know constantly checks and makes sure that they're um, that they're worth putting that extra time into for whatever engagement purpose it is. It is to either get them re-engaged or to make sure that you're, you know, you've got like a brand champion kind of thing going. Yeah. Super smart. Super smart. You're like it, that's the one thing you want to identify, right? Is the oldest people who are one engaged with your content, engaged with your brand, engaged with your product. Um, but also, you know, who, who are going to be the ultra engaged people? Like you said, who are they going to be the brand champion? So I want to loop back to a couple of things you said there that we might've glossed over at the beginning there, but, um, yeah, so you have all these triggers that um, will apply points to someone. Will apply, uh, will add or uh, add to their point score. So over time, that point score accumulates and gets higher and higher, ideally. Um, but what we didn't really talk about at the beginning was that that can trigger something somewhere else in the system. So, for mm -hmm. example, you might want to have a filter built in that says, "Hey, like you said, anytime somebody bubbles over fifty points, for example." Um, 
I want the system to send me an alert, uh, uh, an email to me personally. It says, hey, Barry, uh, Stepan's just bubbled over 50 points. So now I can reach out to you personally, right? So you're different from the rest of the tribe now. So um, I'm going to give you, like you said, a little bit more access to uh, into the inner circle of the brand or the business. So I might send you a personal email, you know, for straight from my personal email account, or I might pick up the phone and call you because I know that you're super engaged. And the other thing you brought up that's really important as well is setting those points to expire, right? So as people gather these points, as you said, somebody might have been super hot on your content or your products um, six months ago and then fallen off the radar. So they will have accumulated what now, six months later, is some artificially high score. So you want to actually set up the system to to decrement that score or subtract points. So if they go 60 days without opening anything, let's take 10 points away from them. Um, and conversely, just like we talked about with those triggers of identifying um, the super engaged people, you can use those same triggers to identify those people who might be falling off and try and warm them up and bring them back. So in your system, you could say, right, anytime somebody bubbles over 50 points, um, send me an email. But hey, anytime somebody drops from above 30 points to below 30 points, send me an email as well, because I want to know they're going cold and maybe I can reach out to them or give them a special offer, like you said. So um, super good tips. I just wanted to circle back to and something something just popped into my head, actually, while you were talking. Another way you could use lead scoring, um, as you said, you can set up multiple categories. So um, one of the examples I kind of like to use because everybody kind of understands is if you're like a physical training coach and you've got a couple different categories of content, for example, you've got nutrition, fitness, and mindset, you could set up three different lead scoring categories and you could see how interested someone is in nutrition versus how interested they are in exercise versus how interested they are in, you know, mindset stuff. Uh, and you could open up someone's contact record inside active campaign and you could have there a point score on how warm they are for those different three categories so before you reach out to them you can tell how much of their stuff they're interested in each category would have a different score but um yeah that, that's a that, and that that actually kind of speaks to the what you were saying before how the tags show what you're interested in and then the the points kind of show the, the level at which they're interested. So, and it's funny because a lot of, I've gotten into this conversation a lot of times with other people where when you, you start to advocate tags based on in, like interest based tags, a lot of people, or even content type, like people who like webinars, send them more content about webinars and, you know, uh, and, and social content, live events and blog posts and things like that. Right. So all of those different pieces of content, those, um, the formats, those people are, they're already predisposed to them. So you send them more of that. But the more, the, the more engaged they become with your brand, the more they're going to have, like you're going to saturate all their, all your tags. You're not going to really have anything left for them to not be interested in. So scoring is one of these ways where you can, uh, you can create this next element of measurement. And, um, and so I, I just wanted to, to bring that up because I think you illustrated it perfectly with, um, with the three different types of, uh, of fitness interests. Yeah. The other thing that just popped into my head too is like, if someone does have a topic tag, so let's say at some point we've tagged them as they're interested in the topic of nutrition, for example, um, and their lead score goes up, as those points, points expire and, the, and that lead score goes down, let's say it drops below 10, you could use an automation to actually remove that topic tag, right? Because clearly they're not really all that interested in, maybe they were interested in nutrition at first, but they're not anymore. So you can actually use it to take those tags off again, which would be a kind of a clever way to make sure that people don't end up with a million tags like you talked about. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like for example, maybe they went, if you're scoring, if you're giving scores, uh, for visits to certain pages on your website and, you know, now, and so you could use the, the wild card tag, uh, the wild card, uh, site tracking thing, um, to assign point as an entry point, basically. So if, you know, if your URL structure is set up where you have, like for me, I have all my email marketing stuff has my domain slash email hyphen marketing. So all of my articles under for email marketing are under there. So I, I just have a wildcard set, a uh, wildcard, um, site tracking thing set up. So anybody who visits any article, any page under email marketing is going to get an interest tag for email marketing. And, you know, let's say they devour everything on there. Well, they're clearly going to have tons and tons of points, but if they don't go back to that, you're right. I mean, that's, it's a perfect opportunity to say, okay, these have expired. They've gotten less hot on my email marketing stuff. Let me just remove that tag at this point. Yeah, very cool. And the other thing that popped into my mind when you were when you were talking before is we're talking about points expiring. Um, I was like, wow, maybe we don't let them expire. And this would be a cool way to track 
customer lifetime value, right? Everybody talks about customer lifetime value, but what, yeah. if, you had, what if you had some triggers in the system that said, right, um, Stepan's just bought this product for $50. Let's give him 50 points. And then he buys this other product for $150. We give him another 150 points so that you'd have a rolling total in there that never expires. So I can immediately just go into your contact record and I can see under the customer lifetime value lead score would be a direct indication of, you know, how much you've purchased from us in the past. And, and you, um, I'm not sure if you can actually sort, but it'd be a great way to be able to sort by uh, which of your customers has the highest customer lifetime value based on that. That CLV lead score, if you will. That's a good question. Uh, I, I mean, I know you'd be able, you can do an advanced search using scores. So that's under the contact, uh, the contact details uh, category. So I know you could do that. So I guess you could always just do, you know, for that, that score, you could just do over zero. And then if, if that column can't be sorted, um, you could always export it into Excel and then just look at it that way. Yeah, I seem to remember it's it not, can't be sorted. I seem to remember putting in a feature <laughs> feature request for that. But, Probably, um, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, well, what a cool way to just open up and see what someone's CLV is right in two seconds, man. Just open their contact mm-hmm. and go right, boom. Oh, yeah, yeah, and, and yeah. if you wanted to do any special content programs related to, again, it, you know, my mindset's always on this brand champion concept. So if you had a, um, if you wanted to do something where you're going to create, let's say you're creating an advocacy program or you're going to do some kind of an all-star VIP thing, you know, it's a very easy way to just put in that, uh, advanced search, contact search, show me everybody whose customer lifetime value is over, you know, 2000 and boom, those are your, those are like your most profitable customers at that point too. So these are the guys that you really want to, maybe you're going to send, uh, you know, extra, maybe you're doing even holiday gifts. I mean, here's an opportunity to say, okay, here, who are the guys I'm going to maybe, you know, send the extra, the, the bigger basket of swag yeah, <laughs> and, uh, sure. you know, and fruits too versus maybe just a card. So <laughs> it's an option. I mean, you know, holiday giving is like a, can get pretty expensive. So that's yeah. one of those things too. I mean, and there's, and, and there's always those people that talk about, you know, your customer base, there's always that 1% that will spend 10 times more right with you. So you come up with your platinum package or your, you know, super VIP package or whatever it's going to be. Um, but that's what a great way to be able to identify that 1% pretty easily. So, um, yeah, I love that. And another thing you can do too, is to, um, you can use conditional content for your, with when, if you have different brand champions, um, or if you have like a brand champion segment, for example, or high engage, some type of high engager segment, you can actually, you know, let's also, let's just all acknowledge the fact that these guys are going to click on anything that you send them no matter what. So <laughs> yeah. give them something else to do. This is like one of my favorite things. So if I have, if I'm going to put in, if I want to send out a newsletter, for example, and I'm going to have, you know, my couple of latest blog posts or whatever, I might actually alter that. So the, and, and put a conditional tag in there that says, if you're a brand champion, I want you to see, you know, maybe two, maybe some, some social media images and some extra content, and maybe even a totally different call to action along with the blog post link so that you can help me get the word out right? About maybe in an upcoming event. And because I know that that's something that these guys are going to want to do because they're going to want to help me. They're highly engaged with my brand. And it's, it's an ask that I can feel comfortable making because I know that they're already so engaged in my content. And can you, um, for those of you who don't know what conditional content is, uh, it's a way to send out a single message, but maybe a couple paragraphs of that message are different for each person, depending on some sort of trigger or some sort of uh, flag in the system. So I know you can do it on tags, right? So if someone has this tag, show them this paragraph of text. If they don't, show them this other paragraph of text. But can you do conditional content on lead scores as well? Like if they're above 20, show them this. If they're below 20, show them that. Not right yet. So what you would do is probably tag them first. Right. And yeah, how- I, I was playing with that the other day and, and it didn't, uh, I mean, who knows? Um, they're making so many improvements along, like in this sort of world, yeah. right? Um, so I, I would assume at some point that's going to, that'll, that'll ex- expand. But like you and I were talking before we went live, it's, um, it's probably one of the, the features that's not being used as by as many people uh, yet. So, um, you know, and conditioning, the conditional content can get, it's extremely powerful, but it can also get a little bit tricky, you know, to write up. So, um, I would just stick with tags. Yeah. So tag all those people, even if you have to do it manually, if this is the first time you're doing it, you know, just do a search for all of the people with that are going to have that, you know, that brand champion score or whatever, give them a special tag. And, you know, even again, if you're just going to try it with a one-off thing, just, you know, do it that way. It's, it's not that big of a deal. 
And you could even do it in your automations, right? You could have, you could have levels, right? So if they, if they hit level one, sorry, if they hit 20, 20 points on their lead score, they get a level one tag. If they hit 50 points, they get a level two tag. If they hit a hundred points, they get a level three tag. And then in your conditional content, you can say, right, if they have a level one tag, show them this paragraph. If they have a level two, show them that one. And if they have a level three, show them this paragraph of text, right? Yeah. And, and that's actually what I'm, what I've been doing now. The only tricky part just to, and you have to kind of think this through. Um, if in those automations where you're in the tagging automation that says if you hit a certain threshold, you know, add this tag, you have to remember to remove the other ones. Yeah. 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 So, right. So it's, it's like there's certain tags you can have like an interest based tag. You can have, you know, you can have multiple tags, but an engagement one, I feel like an engagement based tag. Probably, unless you're going to break it out, well, an engagement-based tag for whatever engagement score you're going to give should be unique. So in all of those automations, make sure you're removing all of the other ones and then adding the one. Yeah. So, so if, they, if they bubble that's over, important. If they bubble over 50 points, give them the level two tag, but remove the level one tag so that otherwise right. they would get both paragraphs of that conditional content. Yeah, very good point. Very good point. Um, so how are you, how are you? crafting or customizing your offers based on a lead score like what are you are you throwing in extra bonuses for the for the brand champions or are you giving them a discount or you know how is that working you know once you've identified one of these people how does the offer the conditional offer differ for those engaged people versus the unengaged people well one of the things you can mess with is copy um, I'm, I'm, this has sort of been my, where I've been playing lately, uh, just myself is, uh, is trying to understand the type of copy that I'm using, uh, how it resonates with different people who have certain levels of familiarity with my brand. So it's one of the, I mean, it's a, it's a whole trust building exercise, obviously with, with us as email marketers. I mean, the copy we use is so incredibly important. And I've found that as you become more familiar with your, with the person that is sending you emails, you know, the more that person can kind of, oh, the more personal they can get, honestly. I mean, it, and, and honestly, we're in an inbox. This is a personal, it's kind of a personal space here. It's a one to one thing and, you know, all that stuff. We all know these, this stuff. So, um, what I'm, what I'm actually playing with really is the type of, uh, the type of, um, copy that I'm using. And I know, for example, that I can get away with something that may be a little bit more on the aggressive side of things. Uh, and, and may not to use the word sleazy, but might seem like a little bit more on that side of it, right? I know I can get away with that with people that I have that have built a ton of trust with me, and I can use the score to kind of measure that. Um, because, and the reason I would use it is because honestly, it's incredibly effective. I mean, it's going to get it's the type of stuff that will get people to act, and that's what I want them to do. Um, the problem with that is if you do it with if you use that kind of tone with somebody where you haven't built up that trust yet. You know, you're, you're getting flagged as a spammer. You're getting unsubscribed. You're obviously not getting the kind of result that you want. So you might have to take a little bit more of a, you know, a little bit more of a polished, uh, tone to your copy or, um, something a little bit more familiar that, um, you know, like a little bit more structured or familiar where somebody, again, they just might not fully understand who you are. Maybe your little idiosyncrasies or anything like that. Uh, whereas a brand champion, you can, you know, you've probably replied a couple of times. You've had some interaction or they've seen you in a, they've heard you in a podcast, seen you on a, you know, on a live stream or something. They've read your blogs. So they understand your voice really well. And so you can kind of get, you know, you can, you can have a little bit more latitude with that. And that actually will get more, you know, better results, which is great without having to feel like, okay, I'm walking on eggshells here. So, um, that's a, a, I, I actually played with that at the end of last year and realized that that was the only way that that was going to work. Um, because I, I lost about 10% of my email list, believe it or not, between, um, just dated addresses and, uh, and unsubscribes, uh, because I really kind of went over the top. I mean, I got great results, but I went over the top with, um, with my copy and, uh, it was a good lesson learned. Yeah. So I, I would change that moving forward, you know, that's, and I think that's one of the things where a score could actually help a lot. Yeah. Everyone always talks about how, you know, uh, being able to sell somebody involves a lot of no like, and trust. So there are people in different phases of that no like, like, and trust, uh, cycle with you. So you, you're not going to talk to everybody the same. Uh, just like if you walk into a real life networking event and there's some people you've interacted with before, maybe they bought from you before. You're not going to talk to them exactly the same way you would talk to a stranger you just met. So, um, yeah. So I always like to tie it back to kind of real world equivalent of how do we, how do we differentiate those people who are, 
who are our friends and do know, like, and trust us as opposed to those people who are just getting warmed up or just met us. So yeah, you're exactly right. Your lead scoring and conditional copy, uh, conditional content with different copies, a perfect way to do that. Yep, so it works pretty well. Uh, Stepan, so if someone wants to get involved with some lead scoring or, or get a bit more information around what you've done with lead scoring and how, uh, and some of the, some of the tricks and tactics and techniques you're using, where's the best place for them to do that? Oh, well, the, um, I'm trying to put as much of that into the active campaign marketplace as I can. Um, I, I think it's a place where hopefully, uh, as more people start to adopt it, you know, some of these, these, these simple things that I've set up, uh, to get them started. You know, that, that'll be available in there. Um, also on Shovi.com, which is my site, uh, there's an online chat on there and you're more than welcome to just, that goes straight to me. So you can uh, just connect with me over there. Beautiful. Yeah. And so uh, for those of you who haven't heard, uh, Active Campaign will be starting a marketplace uh, soon. Maybe even by the time this episode goes live, the marketplace will be in place and you'll be able to go and buy uh, or download either free or paid automations um, from some of the automation superstars uh, like Stepan. And uh, I'll probably have some in there. And I know a, lot of, a few of the other uh, marketing automation super geeks like us are planning to put automations into the marketplace so people can basically just supercharge their marketing. They can just go there, either download a free one or pay a, you know, a small fee to get um, some sort of uh, really set up, pre-set up, pre-made automation and import it straight into their account. So that marketplace is coming soon. I'm not exactly sure what the release date is for it, but it's probably uh, weeks away rather than months away. So you will see both of us inside the marketplace. Uh, in the meantime, head over to Shovi.com uh, to check out more step on stuff. And as always, you can find everything we talked about in the show notes uh, over at theactivemarketer.com. Step on. Thanks for joining us today. I really appreciate it. Some really great food for thought there. Thanks, Barry. This was great. I want to thank Stepan for coming on and bouncing some ideas off of me back and forth, sharpening the blade as it were. And I want to thank you for joining us on this episode. After all, you're the one we're doing this all for. We're trying to get all this information out in the hands of all the business owners out there who want to use it and put it to work in their business. Now, having said that, you can jump over to the show notes, which are going to be over at theactivemarketer.com forward slash 52. And there'll be two super simple automations there to do with lead scoring that you can suck straight into your business. Basically, there'll be two automations there. One will track anytime someone opens an email and it will give them a point. And those points will expire after 60 days. And there'll be a second automation that tracks any link that they click on. And then it will give them two points. And those points will expire after 60 days as well. So you'll be able to keep a running total of points for those people who open uh, your emails and click the links in your email. So head over to theactivemarketer.com forward slash 52. You'll be able to suck those automations straight into your account for free and you can be using lead scoring in your business in just a matter of moments. So if you've been following me for any amount of time, you know that one of the reasons I do this is because I think marketing automation and sales funnels are a super powerful tool for anybody to put into their business. And in the past, it's kind of been the domain of the really advanced top tier marketers. But as the technology becomes more accessible, it's something that can be utilized by anybody who has a website. The problem is there's not a lot of educational material around how to go and do this. This is why I started the Active Marketer podcast in the first place. I'm on a crusade to educate people on how they can implement this stuff in their business. So we've had Udemy courses, we've got podcasts, we've got the private automation nation, private Facebook group where we solve problems and talk about tactics. But it's still not enough. It's still not enough. I get uh, emails and calls from people all the time where they're frustrated that they can't quite get it to work or they've made a mistake or they're not sure how this should go or they're not sure how these great tips like from Ezra Firestone there with his post-purchase sequence, they're not quite sure how that applies exactly to their business. So in 2016, I am stepping up the game, brothers and sisters. I am going to open a private coaching community 
that really is going to be a hotbed of sales funnels and marketing automation. I want to make this the place that wasn't available to me when I started. Years ago, when I went started my marketing automation journey, um, I found some great tools and I went to work and I was going to write, I'm going to implement these in at the time in my wife's business. And hey, guess what? There was nowhere to learn. There was nowhere to go. Nobody was talking about this stuff. And it's just so powerful and so amazing, right? So I had to learn from trial and error, much like you're probably doing now, right? So you know it's powerful and you know you want to do it, but it can be confusing and it can be a little technical uh, and it's quite easy to make a mistake. You know, the wrong tag fires the wrong sequence to somebody and all of a sudden emails are going out that you didn't mean to go out. So this year, 2016, hopefully in just a few weeks, I'll be opening the Active Marketer Insiders private coaching community. It's going to be the coaching and implementation community I always wished I had when I was starting out with this marketing automation stuff. I want to make it super simple, super clear, and super easy for you to put this to work in your business because I think it's really, really powerful and can change anybody's business. So in my crusade to educate, we're going to bring together a private coaching community for you where you're going to get access to tools, tactics, and techniques. You're going to have direct access to me inside the community. We're going to run uh, private coaching calls and group hot seat calls. So if you really want to know how to put this in your business and you are brave enough to put yourself on the hot seat, Myself and other members of the community will break down your business and break down your sales funnels and really pick it apart and put it back together so that you have the best possible automation, the best possible sales funnels working in your business. And inside the coaching community, we're going to have tons of resources for you. We're going to have shared automation library. You can just click on an automation, put it straight into your business. We're going to have swipe files for your emails. We're going to have funnel blueprints that show you exactly the steps you need to take at varying degrees of complexity. So if you're just starting out, you don't want a super complex funnel. You just want, hey, where's the very first place to start? We're going to say start here, then move to this, then move to this, then move to this. We're going to have funnel blueprints. We're going to have quick action plans, checklists that you can follow to put this straight into work into your business. We're going to have group coaching calls, as I said, hot seat member hot seats, monthly webinars, and as I said, it's really going to be the premier place for anybody who wants to learn about sales funnels and marketing automation. I'm really, really excited about this. So here's your special offer. I want you to head over to the URL I'm going to mention in a minute and express interest in being a founding member of this community. I'm not going to charge anything now. You're just expressing interest that you want in when the doors open. And what that means to you, what that special offer is, is anybody who's put their hand up, you're going to get early access to the community at special founder rates. So I know you're taking a chance on me because this community is just starting and I want to provide you the best possible reason and the best possible resources in, to get started inside this community. So you're taking a chance on me and I understand that. So I'm going to give you a access to special founder rates. So anybody who's on this early expression of interest list, you're going to get first go getting into the community at special founder rates before we launch this to the public. And those special founder rates will never go up for the lifetime of your membership. As long as you stay an active member inside the community, that special founder rate will never go up. The price to the general public is certainly going to go up over time and probably very quickly as we pack resources and great learning materials inside that community. So you have a chance to get in now at special founder rates that will never go up for the lifetime of your membership. So... If this sounds like what you need in your business, I want you to head over to theactivemarketer.com forward slash special offer. Just put your name in there and tell me that you're interested. When the time is ready, we're ready to open the doors to these early founder members. We'll send you an email and that's the time we'll bill you if you want to get into the community. In the meantime, run over to the theactivemarketer.com forward slash special offer. Put your name and email address in there and I'll contact you with some more information. So I'll see you next week. In the meantime, get out there and design, automate, and scale your business to the next level using sales and marketing automation. See you, everybody. Thanks for listening to the Active Marketer Podcast. You can find the show notes and all the latest marketing automation news over at theactivemarketer.com.